Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The head of the unburied queen left to rot for 400 years. One of the most shocking stories in English history was how Queen of England was left unburied for over four centuries. Catherine of Valois was the wife of King Henry V, the hero of Agincourt. Catherine's marriage was short-lived and she would only be queen for around two years but she would later marry Owen Tudor, the grandfather of the Tudor dynasty. But in her death, she was treated terribly, and her remains were tampered with and messed around with. But one thing that is very interesting is the funeral effigy of Catherine that has existed for centuries is one of the earliest examples in Britain of an effigy used for a queen's funeral. It shows Catherine's countenance and appearance and would have been placed on her coffin for her funeral procession. However, what is the story of the head of the unburied queen left to rot for 400 years? Catherine of Valois would die from childbirth complications on the 3rd of February 1437, but it was believed that she was unwell for some time also, and that this could have contributed to her death. She was only 35 at the time of her death, and she was given a huge queen's funeral, despite the fact she had remarried, and the marriage caused a huge amount of scandal. Following her death, she was embalmed and her vital organs were removed to keep away decay, and her body was stuffed with various herbs and spices. Following this, her remains were wrapped in heavily in seer cloth, which was a heavy material soaked in wax, and then her remains were encased in a lead casket, before this was then placed into a wooden coffin. Her organs were placed in different places, such as separate jars and boxes, and they were usually buried in places away from her body, in significant places to the deceased. But the thing that is very interesting is actually the effigy that exists of Catherine of Valois, it can still be seen today, and during the medieval and Tudor period, funeral effigies played an important role in the funeral services of kings and queens. The people of the nation would most probably have never seen images of the king or queen, and there was no television or newspapers or photography. So because of this, when funeral processions passed through London and the people flocked to pay their respects, the effigy would be the one of the first times the public would see what their monarch looked like. Portrait paintings were often not public also, and were only allowed by the powerful and the wealthy, so effigies would show people what Catherine of Valois looked like. Her effigy is rather interesting and captivating, and it shows the Queen wearing what would be a red dress. However, this would be covered by clothes of Catherine. Her head is rather haunting though, and she appears to have a rather long face and eyes that look slightly droopy and sleepy. Her nose is also rather pronounced and she has a rather small lips. Catherine's effigy also has a strong and powerful neck and on the effigy one of the arms is missing. But it's remarkable that this has survived for 600 years. As mentioned, this effigy would have been clothed and would have been dressed in the royal regalia. She is also shown being rather tall and the effigy is carved from wood and shows her with bluey green eyes. But this would not be the end of the story of Catherine of Valois, of her head or her remains. Following the funeral, she was then laid to rest inside an alabaster tomb in Westminster Abbey near to Henry V. She was buried for around five decades, and her son wanted to create a large memorial for her, but he could not afford to do this, and died before this occurred, with the Wars of the Roses gripping the nation. But then Henry VII demolished the old lady chapel. Henry VII was Catherine's grandson and her tomb was destroyed and her body was unearthed as they were digging the foundations for a new chapel. Catherine's decaying coffin was then tampered with and her remains were taken out of the coffin and were separated from the inner lead coffin and were placed inside of a wooden chest with lead from the old roof of the chapel. She was then housed inside a makeshift coffin, which was placed on the floor next to her husband's tomb, and she was left there for around 300 years. Henry VII was heard saying, In our monastery at Westminster rests, our noble progenitors and blood, and specifically the body of our great dame of right noble memory, Queen Catherine, wife to King Henry V, our body therefore to be buried within the same monastery, 
that is to say, in the chapel where our said great dame lay buried. But the instructions to rebury Catherine were left for over three hundred years, and they were not carried out. And during this time, there were many disturbing things that happened to her remains and her body. The chest had a lid, which was lifted often to show tourists the remains of the Queen. It was said of her body that, the bones being firmly united and thinly clothed with flesh, like scrapings of tanned leather. Onlookers described her as being naked with no clothes on, except the shroud, and people inside of Westminster Abbey began to charge visitors to see her remains. Her body became a tourist attraction, and some would claim that Catherine of Valois remains were left out as a punishment for marrying Owen Tudor. But people would come to see her remains, and would go further, and they would disturbingly mistreat her remains, and even kiss her on the head. The writer, Samuel Pepys, would state how he once went to see her remains, and he wrote, On Shrove Tuesday, 1669, I to the Abbey went, and by favour did see the body of Queen Catherine of Valois, and had the upper part of the body in my hands, and I did kiss her mouth, reflecting upon it, I did kiss a queen. And this my birthday, I thirty-six years old, and I did kiss a queen. This was a man kissing the remains of a Queen of England who had died two hundred years before, which is bizarre and disturbing. Some people would go farther, and many of her teeth had been ripped out. And these were then sold as souvenirs, so it's possible that still today in existence are the teeth of Catherine of Valois. Further mistreatment of her body took place, and in 1788 they were laid inside a vault for around 100 years, but during the reign of Queen Victoria her vault was opened and the tomb broken into again to see if Catherine of Valois was really in the casket. Her remains were found in the open on top of a pile of coffins, and her coffin had rotted. But her body was then inspected, and it was found that many parts of her were missing. Regarding her head, the entire front part of her skull had gone, and was presumably stolen. Also part of her back was found on her pelvis, and many of her backbones were stolen, as were all the ribs except for one, and two of her right arm bones were missing. Her clavia had been taken, and souvenir hunters had stolen the remains of the medieval queen. Her legs were almost perfectly preserved, having been still wrapped in the twelve layers of cerecloth. Following this, the coffin was replaced, and her remains were placed inside it with more dignity for a final reburial to take place. One witness who saw the reinterment of Catherine of Valois stated, It was a striking and impressive scene which I shall ever remember, and which at the time it was impossible to view without some feeling of emotion. The daylight had quite faded, and we were alone in the darkened abbey. Two workmen took up the box containing the Queen's remains, and followed Mr. Poole and the clerk of the works, the latter, carrying his hand one small lantern to light us, led the way out of St. Nicholas's Chapel to the north side of the Chantry Chapel. Mr. George Scarf and myself followed. No one else was present, and we seemed unconsciously and silently to fall into a sort of processional order. I remarked to him, we are attending the Queen's third funeral. Not a word was said as we passed slowly round the ambulatory in the darkness. Catherine of Valois' remains had been on a strange journey of disturbing tampering, and her remains were placed in a large oak coffin with an inscription which reads, It is the latest royal tomb in the abbey, and, though long delayed, it has been thought that the singular and romantic history of a French princess and an English queen should at length be brought to an honourable end. Requiescat in pace. Four hundred years after her death, she was finally laid to rest. But what was shocking was that the real head of Catherine of Valois experienced a huge amount of abuse in the centuries after her death. People ripped teeth from her skull and even stole part of it as they were hunting for souvenirs. But the effigy head of Catherine has survived much better than these remains, and it is offered as a captivating insight as to what she actually looked like. Some of these effigies were crafted from death masks, so they were usually realistic impressions of what someone looked like. 
Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.